So as Murtaza said, my name is Elizabeth Weiss, and thank you all for coming today. Um, my project is about advocating for bike transportation in the community of Salida. <coughs> bike for transportation. Currently, some of the biggest <coughs> health issues that communities face uh, include diseases such as obesity and cardiovascular disease, which are directly related to sedentary and inactive lifestyles. So biking is a fun and easy way to get physical activity on a regular basis. Biking also gets people outside and socializing with their community and connecting with their natural environment, which is also great for mental health. And lastly, biking for transportation is a zero emissions, non-consumptive activity. However, when we bike for recreation, we sometimes drive to the trailhead or park where we're starting our adventure at, and biking becomes a consumptive activity due to the large increase in recreation and the projected growth in population. And my colleague Dominique will discuss this issue further in her presentation. I chose to do my project in Salida for several reasons. Firstly, there is a strong bicycling culture that already exists. There's about 40, over 40 miles of both paved and unpaved trails within the city limits, and that's pretty impressive for a small community of 5,500 people. Community survey results show that for the past several years, cars have been the primary mode of transportation in Salida with bikes as the primary <laughs> mode, uh, having stayed relatively the same and decreasing slightly over the past few years. Also, due to budget cuts, um, the city of Salida does not currently have the funding or manpower to maintain the current bike infrastructure or build more. And an example of this is that um, right now they don't have the manpower to repaint some of the sharrows that uh, are on the roads that mark <coughs> that the road is shared and so there will be bicycles on it and that makes it pretty dangerous for both motorists and bikes. And lastly, Livewell Chafee County uh, needed to create a new bicycle education campaign so the timing worked out really well with my availability to do this project. Liz, can I just say something when you bike around the um, clicker? It moves around on the screen, so just to okay. be aware of that. So how can we encourage people to ride bikes more often? Um, we can build and improve infrastructure, and this is the Monarch Spur Trail in Salida. It's a separate uh, bike and pedestrian path that runs through the city. And bike lanes, uh, these are newly painted on Highway 50. Bike share programs have the ability to overcome barriers that are associated with people who don't have money to own a bike or just don't own a bike in general. <coughs> Bicycling related events such as Bike to Work Day can bring the community together uh, over bikes, safe routes to school, and then bicycle education programs that are aimed at adults and kids to teach <coughs> about uh, basic bike skills, bike maintenance, and improve one's confidence to riding. Best to leave the pointer down on the uh, yeah, I think down the side. Yeah, yeah, it's moving. Sorry. Oh, well. <coughs> so the overall goal of my project was to increase the amount of people who ride bikes in Salida as well as in Buena Vista and Poncha Springs. And in order to achieve this goal, uh, my project encompassed three kind of smaller projects. I worked with Livewell Chapey County to create an inclusive bicycle education campaign called Share the Road. I worked with Salida Recreation to plan and implement Bike to Work Day, Bike to Work and School Day, and then I conducted research through community-wide bike surveys. Some of the background for the Share the Road campaign, um, I worked as an intern with Livewell Chapey County, which is a public health organization, and specifically, I worked closely with Kelly Landau, Rebecca Rice, and Lisa Mauld, who moved to New Zealand. 
We conducted research through interviews with local bike shop owners, uh, the chief of police, police, and city employees to obtain information that would help us decide uh, a theme <coughs> for the campaign. We decided on the theme of Share the Road. Uh, based on those interviews, we learned about common conflicts and misunderstandings that occur regularly between motorists and cyclists. And due to the narrowness of most of the streets in Salida, uh, we, they can't really support bike lanes, so most of the roads are shared. And uh, that's why we felt that Share the Road would be appropriate for this campaign. We also felt that it was an inclusive theme and addressed all users of the road instead of singling out one group and favoring another. So this is the poster that we created uh, working with the local graphic designer, Laura Donovan. This poster contains rules of the road that are relevant not only in the city of Salida, but can be transferred to other communities with similar demographics. I personally biked to about 100 locations throughout Salida, Buena Vista, and Poncha Springs to communicate the educational effort and hang the posters up in those businesses and answer questions and explain the uh, campaign more. <coughs> this poster has also been printed on the, safe route, on the back of the Safe Routes to School maps that are being distributed at the schools in Buena Vista and Salida today, actually. And we also printed uh, this in a laminated version so we could hang it up outside on um, bicycle infrastructure, so like on bike paths and bike routes. And yeah. We felt that we could not include all the facts that we wanted to cover on the posters, so we created five smaller scenarios that we ran in the local newspapers in Salida and Buena Vista. And really quickly, um, I'm going to share just three of them with you guys. So this first one shows what to do at an intersection between a bike path and the road. This second one shows how to legally proceed through a four-way stop. Um, one of the major issues in Salida is that cyclists tend to blow through stop signs. So trying to educate cyclists on how to properly behave at a four-way intersection. And then the three foot law, which states that when a car is passing a cyclist, they have to give them three feet of room while they're passing. The second part of my project uh, involved working with Salida Recreation and planning and implementing Bike to Work in School Day last fall. And it was um, a pretty novel event. I sort of took a different approach to planning it and implementing it last year. So instead of having just one uh, bike to work day at station at the steam plant, I thought that it would be great to have two stations, one that was more central and one that was out in Poncha Springs, which is at the end of a newly paved bike path. So we had two new stations and I also uh, went around to local businesses trying to obtain donations in the form of like food, beverages, bike related giveaways, Whereas in the past, Salida Recreation has just uh, donated all of that stuff. So it was cool to have different uh, businesses participating. And I think we got about 10 different businesses to donate items. And I created this poster and hung it up around town and in the schools. And we had a 50% increase in participation rate. The last part of my project involved uh, bicycle surveys for the community of Salida, and I worked in collaboration with Salida Area Parks, Open Space and Trails, and Salida Mountain Trails, who helped to provide the matching funds so I could get some uh, of the heli fund. I also worked with Kelly Landau from Livewell Chafee County and Steve Stewart, who's a professor at Colorado Mountain College. And the objectives of the survey were to reveal the intrinsic benefits that bicycling brings to Salida, as well as to create a platform to justify spending time and money on bike projects. Other objectives were to identify trail and path usage patterns and recreation and utilitarian cycling habits, as well as <coughs> quantify the economic benefits that biking brings to Salida and to illustrate economic trade-offs that people have made to live in Salida because of the trail system. 
Uh, also identifying barriers and incentives to increased riding and taking community comments and suggestions into consideration. And the entities that I worked with, um, they can really use this information to apply for future grants to fund trail building and trail maintenance projects. The surveys were available to be taken both online and in paper, and they were open for six weeks to the public, and within those six weeks, I obtained 315 responses, capturing about 6% of the population. And I would like to briefly share some of the uh, data highlights from through the following figures. So this first figure illustrates the importance, um, how important the presence of paved and non-paved trails are to the people that live in Salida or people that are considering moving to Salida. And it is, it's pretty important to people. Um, this next figure shows that the people that took this, the respondents of the survey feel that cycling is somewhat safe in Salida. So that shows that there is definitely room for improvement to make it safer. This chart over here shows the frequency of usage by trail system and how often people are recreating. And this is important for entities such as SPOT and SMT because they can take this information and decide which trail systems that they should really focus on uh, when it comes to building and maintenance. To some information about utilitarian riding, um, most of the respondents ride for utilitarian purposes, which is like biking to the store, biking to work, biking to school, etc. Um, and they bike for those reasons on a daily basis, and most people ride one to five miles uh, in doing so. So I use the EPA's 411 grams of carbon dioxide per mile driven, which is based on the tailpipe emissions from a typical passenger vehicle, and I was able to calculate the amount of emissions that are mitigated from riding a bike instead of driving a car for several different scenarios. And so I took, um, so 188 people basically said that they bike one to five miles a day. And so I took the scenario of how much would be saved biking one mile, two and a half, and five <coughs> miles. So at the highest end, uh, we could save 851 pounds of CO2 by riding a bike. And at the lowest end, uh, we could save 170 pounds of CO2. This shows why people ride a bike for utilitarian uh, reasons, and most people think it's healthy and fun, and I was kind of excited that environmental reasons were up there, just because usually we don't like to talk about environmental reasons when it comes to some of our projects. Well, I guess maybe my project. Uh, these are some incentives to ride a bike more. So the respondents felt like if felt that if we had increased bicycle infrastructure um, and increased safety along routes and education, that they would be more likely to ride a bike. And some of the economic benefits that biking brings to the community um, can be seen through this figure. So most of the respondents spend five hundred dollars or more on bike related items per year. And I don't have the chart, but out of that money spent, uh, over 50% of it is spent in Chafee County. So that shows that um, biking really provides <coughs> some benefits for the local economy. So the next steps uh, in regards to my project involve relaunching the Share the Road campaign again this spring. Um, starting next week, I'm going to be putting up the posters outside and going back to the businesses uh, that I had approached in the fall. And uh, we can also use the posters at bike-related events uh, this summer and in the future because the poster is pretty timeless unless the laws in Colorado in regards to biking change. Uh, for Bike to Work and School Day, Slider Recreation can reuse the materials next year and I'm helping to plan Bike to Work Month at the local hospital. And for the bike surveys, I'm going to present the results and answer questions at SPOT and SMT board meetings, as well as the city council meeting, possibly. 
And we're also considering creating uh, separate surveys for visitors this summer to further quantify the economic benefits of biking. And I would like to thank Corey Knapp, my advisor, Kelly Landau, Rebecca Rice, and Lisa Mauld, my community sponsors, Donna Rose from Spot, um, the Heli Fund, Slide of Mountain Trails, Steve Stewart from Colorado Mountain College, and all of you guys. So Liz, is there, is there a difference um, in infrastructure type? So dedicated bike lanes versus a uh, bike, uh, let's say a, a paved bike path. Yeah. Um, and, and, and what have you heard from your community from, from Salida, right, in terms of these differences in infrastructure? Um, from the community survey, I want to say a lot of the comments were in regards to more bike lanes. Um, because there really aren't many bike lanes in Salida due to the narrow streets and just reading, you know, not specifically in Salida, but reading other research, <coughs> people feel safer when they're like in a designated bike lane or like even a protected bike lane that's becoming a uh, more popular infrastructure right now. So like it's a bike lane with sort of like these plastic bars that protect, provide some more protection from the car. So the car like hit that plastic and realize that like, oh, they're about to go into the bike lane. Um, but for Salida, yeah, the community responses were mostly that they would like to see more bike lanes. I have a question from Gwen, who's online, and she says, do you think this campaign is transferable to other places, and can you take the findings and apply them to other regions of Colorado? Yeah, definitely. Um, we were discussing maybe uh, running the campaign in Leadville. Leadville just got a Safe Routes to School grant, and so I think that we could totally use the poster um, in the community of Leadville. Originally, we were not going to run it in BV, but Rebecca Rice, she works out of BV, so she thought that it would be great to run it there too, so I think so. I mean, even in Gunnison, it could be used. <clears throat> One of the first slides is showing vehicle miles traveled on the rise. Is there any data or information on bike miles traveled or BMT? Like, <laughs> yeah, no, there yeah. totally is. Um, I think League of American Bicyclists has a lot of that information. Um, and I don't know it offhand, but it is definitely on the rise for sure. But it's just not increasing as fast as BMTs are increasing. <coughs> You, with your survey, um, who did you target? How did you target them? And, and who were your responders? I mean, in terms of bikers, non bikers? Yeah, so I really wanted to encompass the entire community, which was why I printed paper copies too. Um, I think the median age in Salida is around like mid 40s, but it is definitely like an older community, and so. I felt that maybe the older population might not want to like take the surveys online, so I printed the paper copies, and then I also made posters uh, that I hung up around town with like a link to the survey that could just be like pulled off and you could take it later or on your phone or something like that. Um, I didn't really target the schools, which in retrospect I probably should have uh, targeted this, like students to bring the surveys home to their parents. But uh, for the purposes of just like dealing with the IRV, I only wanted people to take the surveys who were over 18 years old. Um, were motorists involved in your research and outreach at all? And can you talk about kind of how they play a role in bike education? Um, Well, yes and no, I guess, because we put the posters up in like, I mean, just a wide variety of locations. Like I went to auto repair shops and like put the posters up. So we had like a list of locations that we wanted to hang the posters up at and we made sure that it wasn't just like gear shops and bars. It was a good mix of locations where like, most of the people 
that live in Florida, and Buena Vista like might travel through. Um, in regards to research, I guess not. Well, in the community surveys, they have like a area for comments, and so some of the comments were from motorists, obviously, and like complaining about. Complaining about like, bicyclists like going through stop signs and, stuff. and that's all the time I have. Sorry. <laughs>